Guys, good morning. Welcome to One Minute CM again. Uh, we have uh, Ritu Ji here. Uh, thanks for joining, Ritu Ji. A quick introduction, Ritu Ji. Uh, before I start, I, I just wanted to uh, share my opinion about the education system nowadays. And you know, we have schools who are completely into ranks and scoring, and you know, too much of pressure for kids. There are also schools which are uh, which have the right balance of uh, you know education. extracurricular activities innovation and you know uh, letting uh, the kids do what they really want to do so we have some good schools which are coming up with this uh, the reason i you know we're doing this particular show is there are very few teachers who actually have uh, you know uh, the passion to live their life and also showcase that to their students because the students only have three people who really make a big impact in their life you know their two parents and mother and father and then the teacher so it's really important and i've not come across uh, many teachers i mean maybe because uh, we were at uh, uh, older school uh, you know that old school system the teaching system was pretty good the teachers were more uh, inclined towards discipline and you know not much of uh, on innovation but things have changed uh, in the last uh, two decades or uh, two three decades where you know pe- teachers are more inspirational and you know one of the teacher we have here ritu ji who believes in uh, innovative teaching and uh, that's really apt for this particular moment and uh, she she has got very good uh, you know uh, charisma in terms of way she teaches she is also a good preacher of how the life should be so all the students have to do is connect to her facebook account so that she can I mean, they can check uh, what she has done uh, in her lifetime in terms of uh, her passion towards adventure, uh, passion towards uh, you know writing, passion towards literacy. So, ma'am, th- th- this is what I could uh, you know come out of uh, you know this particular uh, I mean your profile. Uh, but maybe you can talk more about uh, you know what you do and you know how how did you you know what was your journey and how how do you uh, you know rate uh, the schooling or your Uh, way of teaching uh, students mm-hmm. hi ravi thanks for having me here uh, i think you talk too much about me so too uh, you know too much i uh, am a, by profession a teacher and if you ask me about you know, like i introduce myself <laughs> it's a long long journey you know you realize you are quite old when you have to keep on scrolling down to reach your date of birth when you attach uh, you know you register to an app or something right, right. <laughs> so uh, how yes i was born brought up in pilani a very small town we didn't mm-hmm. uh, into an educational family so we were surrounded by uh, you know education and educationists rather Mm. and uh, you know i was brought up uh, i along with my siblings have been brought up in a very open environment our parents even at that time uh, you know did not have any kind of gender bias so you know it's been engraved in uh, my blood i i say that absolutely no gender bias whatsoever and uh, so you know grew up there and uh, became a teaching assistant after finishing my msc honors from bits pilani and i was jittery how will i go and face students who are just a couple of uh, you know years younger than me and there my father took upon himself and he trained me mm-hmm. every single class i had to deliver it the previous evening in his office on the blackboard one whole semester those were the days i learned i learned how to distribute the board what should be my angle how should i refer to notes how do i make the children ask the right questions so hats off to his passion and uh, you know and uh, making sure that i do everything you know correctly so yes you know started teaching from that time onwards did my bed from ignu university i was the first batch very proud to be that <laughs> of wow. ignu university and um, but on to teaching at amity international noida mm-hmm. well left my lot a lot 
I have been really lucky to have great colleagues, great friends, and we learned together. We helped each other. Sometimes there were days my kids were raised by, you know, they were, you know, at a friend's, at a colleague's place if I was overworked. So, you know, and we learned um, our head of the institutions matter a lot. And I would not shy away from taking name of uh, uh, Mrs. Moinadar, who was our principal. I mean, amazing personality and mm -hmm. an educationist. She taught us how we could do multitasking being a teacher. And that was an amazing past six, seven years of my lifetime there. But I had mm -hmm. to, I thought I'd rather, you know, take care of my children first. Uh, because I could not cope up, as my headmistress used to say, Ritu, you're not made of 200%. You know, you can't give 100% at school and 100% at home. So um, somehow it clicked to me. I you know, weighed my tangibles and intangibles and quit my job because my husband, Pankaj, had a traveling job. He was traveling 15 to 17 days a month. And those were not the time when you could pay a bill by just clicking a button, right? Those were the times you had to stand in the long, long queues for two, two, three, three hours. And the, you know, and um, so, yes, after my kids uh, went to college, I started a little setup of my own because I realized they were preparing for SAT. And English was a place where there was a lot of gap. They scored very well everywhere. And I, you know, started thinking that let me start, you know, if I can contribute now that I am relatively free. And I started um, with my partner, uh, a center called Global Wings that would help preparation of SAT and help children, you know, with their English skills. Well, my partner moved on because he had a corporate job and I was left alone. I tried to keep finding gaps, you know, where the gaps are. Why is it that our Indian students don't do so good in English? So there the journey of English started. And I kept going down below, you know, grades. People go from like, uh, you know, kindergarten and above. I started from high school and I went down and kept on, uh, you know, uh, trying to find out techniques. I tried to find out tools that would help these learners understand that even a non-writer. See, I'm not bothered about writers, children who have the, you know, uh, fluency to write. So I was more concerned about that group of children who were eager learners, but didn't have the fluency. So, you know, the journey went on and uh, still distinctly remember, it was 10, 10, 10 when I started that. And it's the 10th year that I have been an entrepreneur. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. And then, um, uh, you know, my husband's job brought us to Hyderabad. Well, I thought, Probably that's the end of my career, but never mind. I'll pick up something. I've, I've been an open minded person, whatever comes my way. Uh, we were abroad for a short period of time after we got married, and I'd, I could not work on a B2 visa. And I took upon, you know, helping the minorities uh, in uh, Florida. We were there, and minorities with the, you know, into reading and writing because they had not been to, you know, this minority group hadn't been to school at all. And it was really, you know, a proud moment when they could make their shopping list and show it to us and they would go and shop for themselves. Anyway, moving to Hyderabad was, in fact, an eye opener for me. I got to meet so many enthusiastic young uh, people, you know, over there in, in Hyderabad, I mean, and uh, got attached to British Council developed lots of programs for them with our colleagues, amazing colleagues. I'm, I'm telling you, I have been extremely fortunate to have lovely colleagues. And you know, you make blunders and they'll cover up for you and things like that have helped me, you know, gain more confidence. And then um, I got attached because I'm a storyteller also. And I love telling stories. And I thought they had so much in them the stories. And that got me into uh, the early childhood association group of the Langana chapter. First, I got into that. And then I joined the uh, main, you know, uh, the national committee one. Attended lots of workshops, went through, you know, 
annual meets and all. And every time I thought, let's incorporate this. Let us use stories as you know, a way to teach. Why is stories just, OK, story is there. All right, here's the moral of the story. So my journey of using stories as a part of curriculum started there. Hmm. And that gained a lot of, you know, um, yeah, people, you know, colleagues and all, we started discussing it and it got appreciated, started giving, uh, you know, workshops on that storytelling because storytelling as a powerful tool for early childhood education. I agree completely. Well, yeah, that's the education part, but certainly. Uh, travel and fun doesn't take a back seat. I love to travel with my family, yes, and have lots of fun with amazing friends here and uh, back in Noida too when we travel. So it's it's been wonderful. It's been a wonderful journey all through. I have no complaints. Super. Uh, I also agree <laughs> that there are very few teachers, uh, Rituji, who have the exposure to you know travel have an exposure to uh, look at education uh, you know as to what are the best practices uh, across different countries and try to do something which is good for india i mean the entire agenda is uh, you know the motive to do something come back and implement something to india otherwise there's no value for travel uh, traveling abroad or you know seeing places so that that's the best part so you you have seen something there you you try to impart uh, you know, the learning uh, back in india so yeah absolutely so what happens is if uh, it has to be contextually changed modified so that these children are also you know able to we can help our own children first of all because what's the point of sam going to australia when mm -hmm. you know radha can go to uh, kerala right why, why do we have to do that well that's another story anyway so uh, I do try to incorporate. So you know we are getting our children, this next generation children, uh, ready for 21st century. Sure. All right. You know we had industrialization where education was all about rote learning, rote learning, rote learning. You know, then came uh, the knowledge. Like whoever could gain more knowledge, yes, they were successful. Probably a little just our time. And now is the time. These 21st century kids will be able to do well in life if they are creative thinkers and their critical abil thinking abilities are enhanced. So my aim is to do that. And I know a single person cannot do it. So I got, I've got an attached to um, a group uh, that's called Indian Literacy Program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm train, trying to train the, these teachers. They are amazing passionate teachers who are ready to learn. So the gap is so much in India, Ravi. You know, we have uh, these international schools talking about teaching through phonics, teaching through smart boards, this, that, blah, 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 it goes on. And then we have some, you know, our government school teachers, mm -hmm. they are, trust me, I have been exposed to many of them. They are passionate learners, Ravi. I've, I've seen you, few oh, yeah. yeah, just that we haven't been able to equip them. So in that process, I, you know, take them on Skype or Zoom and then we're helping them. We were helping them a lot before the lockdown, but unfortunately during the lockdown, because, you know, we could, <clears throat> excuse me, we couldn't connect because they had limited bandwidths and we could only send videos. So I've tried to send videos to them to, you know, uh, remove uh, that mother tongue influence in their uh, spoken English. Yeah. One of the activities recently, I mean, this was a library which was set up uh, in a government school uh, by one of my friends. And yeah, I, I've seen that particular teacher. I mean, she is a pre primary. Uh, teacher uh, and she's so passionate about learning new things she attends all the workshops that go uh, you know online you know nowadays there's a lot of workshops that have been conducted including one of the companies which i'm associated with so things like that you know she's very passionate i mean all all we need to do is show them the door uh, show them the opportunity that yes there are opportunities available 
and uh, you know some of the teachers you cannot make out that they are government teachers unless they mention that based on uh, uh, the way they speak i mean the accent is completely good that uh, you know you won't believe that they're working for a government school so yeah it, it's all about passion you know i, I yeah i can yeah. connect what what you're saying there uh, right and so, these teachers are it's just that they haven't been given the you know right training probably and probably it's at that level you know you don't even know what is right training right so yeah. we have to get in at the grassroots level and then start you know building up india <laughs> cool. so we we have some uh, compliments coming in about you uh, apart from that we also have uh, sarvagya vaish uh, oh that's my son elder one <laughs> so sarvagya <laughs> thank, thanks for sharing he shared a link where uh, you know some of your stories are located it's oh, really yeah. wild on stories from near and far so okay. can you can you talk about some of the stories which you have mentioned there uh, yeah i would love to thank you sarvagya for helping me you know uh, <laughs> reminding me of them so um because i believe as i said that stories can be used extensively so mm -hmm. i take up stories they are folk tales from all around the world and i you know as of course this is a reading uh, of stories is exciting telling the stories is exciting but the main thing here is that we ask the right analytic you know thinking skills which help the children with analytical you know skills those questions i ask at the proper times and they are all related to if you know about or have heard about bloom's taxonomy taking them from uh, you know lower order thinking skills to higher order thinking skills and so the whole process of storytelling is very creative so i have it for the parents in terms of the parents can ask the right questions also so there's a parents copy there anyway that's about the thing but the crux is that we are helping children to think take the story in another direction you know be creative about it enact a part of it right and uh, you know what would you have done if you were such a person you know and then there is an activity that's uh, that's like children love to do activities right so there are activities based upon uh, you know related to that country and we show it on a map where that country is so it's a holistic learning there's talk about currency there's fun facts about you know learn about the country together there are some reading comprehensions where you know i just make them read a comprehension and develop a game hmm. so that you know uh, the problem as you're saying is rote learning too much of rote learning is happening but these kids are amazing they have so much you know thinking skills that we can use that you know to help them reach their potential So and, and these stories are also accessible. Uh, you know, can be accessed by government teachers to practice uh, for the kids. Or, uh, so we have used separate stories. Okay. This level is a little higher. Mm -hmm. So I have another set of stories, which is mainly a picture store picture, and there are four to five lines of very simple English, because oh, nice. they are teaching. So this becomes an oral. just a communication you know if we are using it for enhancing their communication then i use these stories but mm. otherwise when we are teaching them to read we have much simpler version there is a wide gap ravi um, in the reading capabilities and un unfortunately yes my class 2 student can read and uh, you know these stories in an international school but the government schools we are making it smaller and shorter and getting the foundation right through phonics uh, drills that's that's nice so we have uh, now we really want to get uh, into knowing you well uh, your personal side of it so i have a picture where you're sure. trying to fall down you you're uh, trying to jump from a rope <laughs> <laughs> so no that's a, that, i'm not trying to jump this was last year i'm not trying to jump here there's another one where i jumped that was in, in new zealand uh, 
I took it took all my courage, but yes, I was the first one in the family to uh, do skydiving. This is zip lining. <laughs> this is zip lining. This was fun too, you know. Okay. It, Where was this located? Uh, this was in Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Costa okay. Rica. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the next picture is uh, of your family. So, uh, can you sure. basically? Uh, Introduce them uh, to sure. us. Sure. This is yeah. uh, you having uh, dinner with your family. Yeah, this is uh, it. Uh, that's my daughter-in-law, Brianna, and it was her birthday, mm -hmm. and uh, we were in Costa Rica. That's our elder one. That's uh, Sarvagya. That's Pankaj, my husband, and my younger one, Satha, could not come for this uh, trip. Okay. So. I, I'm very proud of these, uh, this family of mine, all surrounded by, you know, we're heavy into education, pitching in for each other. I bounce off ideas with, we call her Bree. So, you know, she's amazing, uh, daughter-in-law. And, uh, you know, she is the one where I can just bounce off ideas. All right, is, this is a story I have written. What do you think about it? And she's beautifully, you know, tells me, uh, you know, how about this, mom? Can you do this? So we have a great relation amongst all the you know family members. I'm, I'm touch wood. Yeah, thank you. I'm blessed. Cute, cute family. And what's the uh, story behind the name? Uh, name of uh, your children? Sarvagya, uh, when he was born, my mother was visiting uh, and she was reading Gita. Mm -hmm. And she came Sarvagya somewhere. So we burdened him. We said, all right, chal, bita. Tu lele, up, you are <laughs> no, all knower now. <laughs> so he has to keep on living up to his expectations. <laughs> then uh, Sarthak, uh, again, I think uh, somebody in the family was reading uh, one of the scriptures mm -hmm. and said, chalo, Abhi, because, you know, uh, you know, like now your family is complete. So, you know, Sarthak ho gaya. So let us just then. Sartak became a very popular, uh, you know, name in that age. So he still tells me, like, Mama, you kept such a common name, you know. Every, you know, uh, so many uh, children in the school have Sartak as their names. So yeah. that is there. Both of them uh, maybe having tough time telling the story, you know, as to how, you know, how, story behind the names. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. They have a very tough time and... Uh, you know, they're very difficult. Uh, they're both, uh, you know, in US and it's very difficult for US people to say their names. So they might be cursing me, but it's okay. That time I was the mother, I had the choice. So <laughs> I, I liked and I kept what, you know, uh, what I liked. <laughs> yeah, they, they might be having some pseudo names, right? You know, Absolutely. Some yeah, 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 yeah. So what I are they? Sarkar does not have a pseudo name, but Sarvagya is Servi. Servi, okay. Survey. Yeah, uh, he's usually like I think he's even on his uh, card, the business card. I think it's survey only, if I remember correctly. Right. Nice, nice. Can but this you? little, a little girl coming into a family was amazing. Last, this is that it, it's their anniversary on the 18th, and this is the third year. So wow. you know, I couldn't have asked for a better daughter-in-law. She's like my daughter now, totally. I'm totally Congrats. in love with her. Congrats, sir. Okay, so you've got. A lot of compliments, the right choice you made out there. So, <laughs> so the next picture is uh, with a team. Yes. Yeah, what's the story behind this? So he, this is a time when I, uh, I had gone to Pune uh, for ECA conference and I was presenting and helping their all pre-primary teachers, Ravi, over there mm -hmm. and from all over around India. And uh, we were trying, we would, I had shown them how you can use a story to, uh, you know, help in all these areas, you know, use Bloom's taxonomy story. Please, let's not, you know, just be stories. They are fun also in this way. But when you are telling a story, you can enhance many other areas. So this was immediately after the session and it was very well accepted. We have created a group where we are bouncing off ideas and you know the teachers we discuss okay this story i'm not able to think about the questions we pitch in for each other it's an amazing group yeah, and many of them are a part of that group so it's at the end of that workshop cool. 
Uh, so is now, we want to wrap up questions. Sure. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm not able to hear. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Ravi, your voice is. Uh, I'm not able to hear you. Is it better now? Yes, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So, three words that will describe you <sighs> Teacher. Friend, learner. Cool. So all about teaching only. Nothing. बच्चों को भी हमने बच्चों को भी मार मार के ही पढ़ाया था. तो teacher तो मैं पैदाइशी teacher हूँ. On the scale of one to ten, how cool are you? This is this is out of the class. Okay, so we. But this this. This, this is, uh, you're only talking about Ritu, okay? So no more teacher, you know, that personality we're keeping her aside. So uh, Ritu at home and with her friends outside. Um, I feel eight. Yes, I'm enthusiastic. So I love, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel I'm cool. <laughs> eight. So Pankaj also will give the similar rating or he, he would differ on this rating? Please ask him. <laughs> <laughs> He'll need, he'll need to put it there somewhere. I'll find out after the uh, you know other session. Yeah. So what is that one thing you always wanted to do and still pending? <laughs> still pending. Yes, there is one desire that I still have. I'm trying to you know do more and more, a lot more than you know I was doing earlier. But there's one thing that I haven't gotten down to is collecting all the stories that I have written mm -hmm. and put it together in a form of a book. I do bits and pieces. I contact somebody and then, you know, but then it fizzles out and, you know, it always goes on the back burner. So that's, that's one thing I really want to do. Yeah. So there are three people who have given you a score of 10 out of 10 uh, for being the coolest and you know there was one person who is really contradicting that uh, your son he says 11 out of 10 <laughs> <laughs> he, he uh, these children the three children have helped me become you know very techno savvy i was a person uh, 10 years back who could not write an email properly all right and all these, this whole family has helped me reach, and Sarvagya and Brianna, especially, also uh, have helped me. You know, they've handheld me and done it. And Sarthak also, you know, critical reviews and all that he gives me. Oh, and Pankaj is just like, you know, a nudge away. <laughs> if you don't do that, you're going to not get your favorite dinner today. So, yes, I have, uh, you know, probably. Um, they feel yeah so you know uh, i do take pride in being a learner and that i from a person who in 2011 when i had gone to drop my little one to us for his undergrad education the elder one was taking me um back to my hotel and he says i just you know scroll uh, on the phone and find the google maps right trust me ravi I have never felt so ashamed of myself that I did that day. I could not. He had to pull over and fix it. And then coming back to India, that way, I had a Nokia, that punching wala, jo hota tha, na, phone, wo wala tha. And then, you know, coming back to India, I bought my first smartphone and there's no turning back. Yeah. Now I, used the, I heard yes. the that you're the brand ambassador for Apple today. <laughs> well, that's okay, but I, I use it, all right? It's not that it's just lying with me. If I'm doing my online classes, I connect my bamboo slate, so which acts like a blackboard. So little children are also comfortable. They like to see teachers' handwriting than the, just the PPTs, right? So there, that has a big advantage. So I'm learning, yeah, and I want to, you know, always keep on using it. Yeah. So that relates to my next question. What is the new technology that would transform the educational system in the future? <laughs> we'll have to have a drastic change with this COVID coming in. 
I have been, uh, you know, reading a lot of uh, reports about higher education. And certainly, it has been an eye opener in the education system. And our teachers are trying to adapt. So, you know, the regular classroom teaching, there'll be something different that will have to come out of this. See, every big change that has taken place has been due to a challenge, right? It has been due to a challenge. So probably I feel that school systems will evolve a method of helping, you know, students with just, you know, thinking skills, being creative. What will you do with garbage? You know, they'll be, the children of this, you know, age group generation, when they become, uh, they are ready uh, for the workforce, they're going to be, you know, they'll be successful if they can convert garbage into something, right? So something will come up, but technologically, I'm not, um, we'll have to wait and see, you know, where the work is going on. Online is there, teachers are, you know, gathering the courage, they're very scared. I've been training teachers online for, you know, online uh, school, um, but yes, there's a lot of apprehension amongst the teachers. I can't think, pinpoint something that, you know, but something drastic is going to happen. I'm confident of that. What is the most interesting thing that you have in your purse? In my purse? Borolin. <laughs> it's, a, it's a joke in the family also, trust me. You, your lips are dry? Borolin. <laughs> You, you get bitten by a brie will vouch. My daughter-in-law will vouch for that. She got bitten by, and you know, insect bite, put a, oh. apply some borolin. <laughs> so that's a standard joke. Amma's first, all you'll get is uh, a borolin, paka. That's 100%. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. And a similar uh, thing is uh, <clears throat> Vico turmeric. I think uh, that that's one thing also, you know, has similar multiple My, activities. Yes, 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 that also, right. Nice. What, what would you <laughs> become famous? World famous. You know, you're already famous or world famous. No, no. I'm just a teacher trying to, you know, uh, do the best I can. And, uh, you know, I want other teachers to really be passionate. And, you know, if you need help, we are there kind of thing. Become famous. <sighs> Remove disparity. You know, absolutely. Somehow, it's not about religion, caste, creed. Let's let's just get rid of all that. Yes, that's something I want. Yeah, you also I, carry. Uh, that's also coming up. So we have some friends who rely on you. That okay, madam, chale ka party ke liye ja rahe hai na. So you know. <laughs> You will have band-aids, so don't worry about it. Don't carry that. Because they give me, uh, you know, some other stuff, no? They, they know that also. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. so, how many books did you uh, read during this lockdown period? Um, come to think of it, it's been very busy. The book I completed was uh, Going to the Mountain. That was nice one. Very, very good one. And uh, then there were uh, quite a few in the education, in the pre-primary education. I read about Ma Maria Montessori. I re read about Play by uh, Stuart Brown. It's a very good book. And any educationist here must read it because the way he talks about, you know, uh, including play in our curriculum is amazing and gives very simple tips. Apart from that, it's been really, really busy, Ravi. I couldn't get time to do because we're developing programs um, and many other activities, you know, you have to keep sane also. So did a lot of art and craft uh, to med meditate. And, uh, you know, uh, did we did, uh, as is a community where, uh, you know, we retained our housekeeping staff also during the lockdown period. Right, because they were always having problem going up and down. There'll be cops who would trouble them. So we retained, as most of the, I think, apartment complexes in Hyderabad did. 
And, uh, you know, so we were preparing meals for them. There was a schedule and we were making meals for them. We were making them comfortable. Um, I got into, uh, with my husband, making masks, um, you know, the cloth masks. Um, I wish I had more time to do that, uh, you know. I had a desire to make a number, but I didn't reach yet. I will <laughs> one day. So, yeah, these are the books I read. So, you know, you, you're on the other side as a teacher. <clears throat> what about during your childhood? I'm sure you would have done a lot of must be some weird things, some memorable stuff. So, yeah. Some... <laughs> we, all, we all did, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, as I told you, I grew up in a very small town called Pilani. There was one girls' school. There was only one. It was a campus. Pilani is just a campus. We have the college, Pitts Pilani. The staff is there, and then you have a girls' uh, a school, which is Villa um, Balika Vidya Pit, and it's a residential school also, right? And uh, so we all went there. Of course, we had our share of masties now that you're talking about it one thing comes to my mind and i learned a big lesson uh so again Bree should log off <laughs> all right <laughs> so uh you know there was this biology teacher um and uh we at the back not really i wasn't a backbencher i can say but that particular day i was sitting at the back and we were drawing her picture all right <laughs> Everybody does that. Haven't you done it? Yeah, I've done it. <laughs> I, I tried. Couldn't, uh, you know, copy exactly how was she. Uh, oh, of course. Talking. Of course not. But anyway, there was a picture of the teacher. And mm -hmm. she's speaking something, something. And she caught me. I haven't even shared it with my mother. If my mother is watching it, you know. And I was so scared. I cannot tell you. She caught me red-handed. And I was taken to the staff room, but she was such a wonderful, I learned a big lesson then. She was such a wonderful teacher. She did not embarrass me in front of my friends or even in the staff room in front of the other teachers. Such an amazing teacher she was. And she told me that this is the worst thing that you can do, blah, blah, blah. I got my gyan. And I have never done anything that bad again, you know, in my life. But as I told you, I learned that, yes, I should never embarrass children in front. Like, never embarrass. We never embarrass children, right? But never even tell them, you know, you're doing this thing naughty. That can be told. You can camouflage it and tell them, you know, in a different way. So that's a naughty thing that came to my mind immediately. Or okay. queen. Something Call, weird, something. Jumping out of the windows in Bitspalani? Have you done that? <laughs> no. I've I done can, it. I can tell I have my, yeah, I'm my Bits friends. We have all, if Anjali is watching, she would be there. And, you know, real close friends. We all just jumped but out of one. You don't have attendance. I mean, maybe that is that something which came recently? Uh, no, we what? never had. No, we never had. No, no, we never had attendance compulsory, but still, you know, you would want to go and show your face and then, you know, just to meet up like here's everybody and then, oh, the class is turning out to be boring. Chalo, let's jump. Right? Pankaj, ko kab mile the? I mean, you, you met him during your uh, work yeah. life? Or, uh, no, no, no. College. We, we met long, long back. Yeah, that's the reason he's asking this question. Something from your college days. <laughs> <laughs> College days, lots of fun, sitting on top of the roof of the uh, bus. Uh, when we went for picnics together and, wow. you know, going duck and everybody would duck if there was a wire coming front, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, so a lot of fun things that way. Yeah, it was almost... We can imagine, uh, you know, uh, where were you traveling on, sitting on the bus? So, uh, Pilani and there is Khetri. Have you heard of the uh, name Khetri? It's the copper mines in Rajasthan. It's just uh, 45, I think it's 25 kilometers only. 
And uh, that was our standard picnic place, you know. Everybody would kid. If we had to bike to K3, I biked to K3 also, right? We all bike to K3 together as a big gang of friends, you know, right? And um, uh, so we went to K3 biking as well as on top of the roof. And uh, there was a small uh, temple on top of a small hill next to Pilani. There's nothing else to do. We had to entertain ourselves, no? Pilani means like a small place, very, very small place. So uh, we had like movie hall, uh, that was our, um, you know, or, uh, auditorium was converted into a movie hall for Saturdays and Sundays. We watched movies there. So we were self-contained, but had a lot of fun. So all these little, little picnics with my college friends, I can never forget. They were amazing. You know, we bonded and we still connect. And uh, we are all very good friends. Awesome. So one best part, I think all the campuses of uh, Pilani are like, I mean, which Pilani are just too good. So yeah. I'm sure. Right, so, right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have a few friends who are cheering you up. Uh, so Ritu dear, write a book now, waiting to have it on my shelf along with dads. Oh, that's my sister. Oh, she's my... She's like always my well wisher, yeah. So my dad uh, has, uh, was a very famous, um, you know, uh, electrical engineering uh, writer. He has written many books. So anybody who's done electrical engineering has done control system has read my father's books. That's why that's coming from there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so what's your biggest addiction? My biggest addiction. Mm. Morning cup of tea. I can't do without it. Three favorite adventures you've done? Three. All right. First is skydiving, mm -hmm. scuba diving, zip lining. Okay. So, Zindagi na milegi dubara mein, all, all three are done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mera ho gaya. I'm ticked it. I, I, if I was younger, I would have done uh, bungee jumping. Uh, not now. I think I'm okay. <laughs> so do, do you come back and, you know, after the vacation and, you know, do you get a chance to, you know, speak about your adventures to your students? Um, I do bits and pieces, but I don't say that I have taken these adventures because, uh, you know, kids go back and say to the parents, like, probably I feel this is my feeling. Uh, you know, if I want them to write on an airplane ride, I don't, you know, uh, say that I have taken. There might be some children who have not taken an airplane ride. So I'm very, very careful about it. And I said, yeah, I've also not taken, but let's write about it. Right? You've seen it in movies. We feel like this. I think people have told me that people feel, you know, something happening in stomach. So I don't usually, I'll extract something, make it into a comprehension passage or a story and then do it. But I don't say that I've gone on this vacation. No, no, no. I refrain completely from that. So next question. You know, in your gated community, when your friends are parting out, I, I heard that you're one active member contributing a lot. So what is that one great feature of yours when you are parting along with your friends in the community? <clears throat> Taking care of the little ones is one now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I can, I'll, I'll take care of all the little ones. All right, I have no problem. And before that, it used to be organizing the food. Right. Organizing or organizing some games at times. So we always had distributed work. So, you know, parties were always a lot of fun uh, and have always been. I wish this lockdown would go soon. <laughs> You know, this COVID would go soon so that we can, you know, get back to regular physical parties. So we also have some serious questions that would ask, uh, including, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Divakar, he's asked the question. I, I thought I'll park it uh, to the end. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. His question is, how, many, how much of questioning allowed in our education system to contradict with conventional models? So, so uh, Divakar, yes, it's a very big challenge as of now. But because, you know, um, 
It is also due to the fact that uh, sometimes, you know, there is a pressure to complete the curriculum. And as you know, see, curriculum also has to be the syllabus, the way uh, of things has to change. Only then we can, you know, uh, do this. Our advantage at pre-primary level is that we don't come under any ministry. There's no education ministry that takes care of pre-primary. Education starts in India at the age of six. So we have been able to include these in various curriculums. And we have seen the results. We have seen the results. Uh, my curriculum is uh, there in our school called Shama New Global School in Changanagar, Hyderabad. And we can see these set of kids. We have worked very hard with the school authorities and they've been very open. And I must you know, really thank them that she uh, she's very open to the curriculum, the changes in the curriculum. And the children, we can see a drastic change in their thinking capabilities. But yes. In the present scenario, um, in um, the regular CBSC, it's very difficult, though now we have started adding questions in the lesson plans. We have started adding questions that you can add this question at this point of the lesson as you are delivering it. I am sure there's going to be a change, you know, and, mm, and we'll be asking more and more questions as, uh, you know, post-COVID, hopefully the syllabus will change as the ministries are all debating right now about how to go about it. Cool. Thank you. We have some compliments also coming in that you prepare awesome tea and I'm waiting to be part of your next party. Yes, so, most welcome. <laughs> so coming on to the main question. So what would you focus on if you become the chief minister? Oh, so I forgot. I forgot all about that in this process. Are <laughs> bhai, uh, KTR and the son and the father, you are doing a fair, fairly good job. Let them keep doing that. <laughs> but yes, I agree. Yeah, you have. Yeah, I remember. Now, uh, yes, it is a one-minute CM. So, um, you know, um, again, it will be related to education, as you would have guessed. Yeah. Right. I had read a quote by uh, Thomas Jefferson. I was attending one of the webinars and somebody uh, from Dartmouth College had mentioned, you know, you know about him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it connects very well at this time and being an educationist. It is that if you solve, if the government solves all the problems except one, and that's education. The next generation is going to reinvent all those problems all over again, right? But if you solve just one problem, and that is education, this next generation is going to solve all the problems. Super. So, well yeah, I think it's just been rephrased. I mean, I'm, I don't remember, like, but yes, yeah. it's become my favorite quote. It's become my favorite quote. I told it to the children in the class also. See, education is so important. So, you know, yes, being a CM, yes, I would do that. You know, and change it even at the grassroots levels. Let's, let's, you know, that's where our, you know, our masses lie. We have to do something there. We all as a community have to, you know, give it back to the community. And what better place than to give it to the government schools, the Anganwadis, you know, and other places. Super, man. Well said. Thanks a lot for joining in. I mean, that, that finishes our round of interview and I, I really admire the way you're doing it. There are very few teachers who like to do something different than what's asked, been asked to do in the school. There are few teachers who would like to, you know, uh, spread this charisma across. There are a few teachers who would like to change the system and also support the government schools because they also need it. It's not always private schools who need better education. So you're one of them, and I, I really respect that. Please keep continuing this along with having fun, setting an example for all the other teachers that life may teaching in any set an example. Be you should enjoy life also. 
And so, that's where the creative juices start flowing, you know, when you're, you know, having fun. Right. And that, thank please, you. Please spread your charisma all across. There, there are a lot of teachers who would admire uh, personalities like you and they need an example to follow uh, the footsteps. So thanks a lot for joining. I hope, friends, you also enjoyed uh, this particular session. Do follow Prithuji in all the activities. I'll share the link. And uh, please appreciate. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ravi, for having me over. And uh, teachers, you are so powerful, you know. Uh, I really admire each and every teacher in his or her own capacity. So go, go, go teachers, go. We are very special. Thank you, Ravi, for having me over. It was wonderful to talk to you and, you know, uh, enjoy this uh, uh, time with you all. And let's all spread cheer all around. Yes, we will. <laughs> Tell about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Have a great day ahead. Yeah. Bye. Bye.